Hi folks, just wanted to put together another wee video for uh, everyone that's uh, joining in on the discussions on our YouTube page and just to try and bring another aspect of Aikido to light that sometimes gets misunderstood. So firstly, thank everyone uh, for joining in, for putting your thoughts forward and for raising issues that I will be discussing in future videos. Uh, it's all very much appreciated and it's good that we're getting positive attitude towards Aikido and what it can actually do out there into the world. So the thing I want to talk about today is a temi in Aikido or strikes and I think it's one of those things that gets glossed over a lot primarily because of several factors which I'll be discussing in a minute. Now I've seen different attitudes towards strikes in Aikido and for the most part uh, most of the dojo that I go to don't actually practice the art of striking with any efficiency. They undertake the very basic attacks that you see. Shomenuchi, straight to the head. Yokomenuchi, to the side of the head. A simple ski punch to the centre, body mass somewhere. And that is about it. And whenever I see that, it makes me wonder about not the capability of the instructors, but whether or not they're looking at Aikido as a martial art or whether or not they're looking at Aikido as just an, an extension of some sort of training system or training programme that they themselves do or if they're looking at only the softer aspect of it. A lot of people, when they get involved in Aikido, look at it as the art of peace, the art of harmony. It's all about self-defence. There's no attack in Aikido. It's all about, you know, defending yourself and taking your opponent's momentum and using it against them. And we hear all this faff, but at the end of the day, it's still a martial art. Unless you stop treating it as a martial art, at which point, what does Aikido become? And it effectively just becomes a form of exercise and a form of partner coordination. Now, I've heard many different attitudes towards a temi and I've read many different attitudes towards a temi. O sensei himself, Shioda sensei, Saito sensei, Saltome sensei, all of these guys that were there at the start of the art and the ones that took it elsewhere and spread it out across the world. I've heard things and read things where Aikido is 80% a temi, 90% a temi, 30% a temi, 50% a temi. But that's not actually telling you anything. What that tells you is, is that different instructors had different attitudes towards what was required for a Temi in Aikido. And like most of these statements, with the development of Aikido from start to finish, what we get is very different results depending on who was training with Osensei when he did it. Now, let's go right back to the start, taking it way back when it was still Ueshi Baha Aiki Bujutsu and Aiki Jujutsu style that Osensei learned it was an offshoot of Dai Toryu that he was taught. There were strikes. You see it in these uh, old photographs, you see it in books like Budo uh, and that type of thing. He was putting in quite a lot of strikes back then. As Aikido developed, it looks as though the strikes stopped being applied or certainly stopped being photographed for whatever reason or the photographs didn't make it. But that doesn't mean that the things aren't still there. Now, when O Sensei started teaching and when in the 40s Aikido started to develop into Aikido, what we have to remember is almost all of the students that came to him initially came from other martial arts. Jiu-Jitsu, Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, Sumo, Karate, they came from lots of different sources. The majority of these guys, uh, sorry, the majority of these people would have known how to strike. They would have known what a punch was, they would have known what a slap was, they would have known what a kick was. They would have known how to unbalance someone with a strike to the face. And this could be why we don't see it in a lot of the, the early, photo, or the, the kind of mid-term photographs, the ones beyond 1935 type of thing. And particularly in later years. And this is something that I say to a lot of my own students, is that Aikido is a wonderful martial art, but it functions best most of the time as a secondary martial art. You come to it after having done something. And that's what happened with me. And I felt the great benefits of that straight away. I was a second dan in karate. Or was I? It was a first dan. So I was a first dan in karate at the time when I first started Aikido. And that went back in 1998. <laughs> I think. Around about 1998 or 99, something like that. I honestly can't remember. It's such a blur. Um, 
But I still had my first stand in karate. I knew how to punch, how to kick, how to block, how to throw, how to defend. I'd also done judo for four years in between that time as well. And I'd been graded a couple of belts in judo. I knew how to defend myself in those types of environments. So when it came to Aikido, the first thing I naturally wanted to do when I started teaching was to ensure that everyone was still able to strike, was able to understand that. And striking became part of the syllabus for me. It just seemed a natural progression. Now, what I tend to see a lot of nowadays is instructors who are primarily Aikidoists or Aikidoka and they have learned only Aikido and then they pass that on. And these are the guys that you see setting up tons of early dojo, they get their first stand, they're out the door, they've been training for, well, in my dojo 10, 12 years, but uh, I've seen guys get a first stand in about two, three years these days. It's that shite, some of the quality that's out there. And then they're flying out the door, they've got no real experience in how to do anything, and they're portraying the martial side of Aikido in a very bad way. In fact, they don't even do it. And these are the same guys who, in the next video, I'm going to be discussing weapons and how the weapons integrate with the body and how it's a massive kind of symbiotic relationship. If you're not doing weapons, you're not doing Aikido properly. Likewise, if you're not incorporating proper strikes, you're not doing Aikido properly because you, as an instructor, are not training your students and how to defend themselves against a proper attack. Now let's just stop and think about that for a minute. Aikido, the martial art, the way of harmony, the way of blending your energy with another person's energy as they come at you and you're supposed to neutralize it and use all their aggressive force against them. You're not teaching your students how to defend against a proper attack. So what the hell are you teaching them? And that's one of the biggest sticking points for me in Aikido at the moment. Now I know traditionally Aikido, in the UK particularly, when it first came here there was a lot of strikes, there was a lot of hits, there was a lot of contact. And a lot of guys came to Aikido from different martial arts, just the same. Karate, boxing, Taekwondo, you had uh, really competent judo guys back in the early days who weren't afraid of putting on a bit of a throw and taking a bit of punishment, you know, and I'm not talking about modern judo, I'm talking about old school judo, where half the techniques from Goshen Jitsu are still being taught in most of the classes. And for those that don't know what Goshen Jitsu is, it's the more jujitsu side of judo that Kano kept in the kind of back burner for his own purposes to bring out as a, an additional thing, I believe. I'm not a judo expert. Uh, so what we have here then is we then get a mix of different attitudes, and I've already discussed the different styles in Aikido. But then, to not be teaching your students how to defend and how to make proper attacks, you do have to stop and wonder what exactly the martial art you're teaching actually is. And this is where a lot of the more modernist martial arts, like the kind of mixed stuff, the MMA, the guys that do... I've been get friends in BJJ that laugh at Aikido, right? Not because they're assholes, but because from their experience, what they've seen is utter crap. It's just rubbish. And I agree with them. That's the worst thing about it. That's why I'm making these videos. I want to get this across to everyone, that there is not just one aspect of the Aikido community out there. There are people in the Aikido community who are actively still trying to encourage this as a positive martial art, rather than something to be ridiculed. So... What we then have is, as I say, you've got people teaching Aikido who have got no experience in striking arts whatsoever. Their only experience in striking arts is what they've been shown, and what they've been shown is that stuff I mentioned the last time. I'm going to hit you now, I'm going to hit you, here it comes, it's coming any minute now, it's going to hit the right side of your face, it's coming in at this angle, it's going to be nice and slow. It's just like, oh Jesus Christ, it's like a cross between Aikido and Tai Chi, some of the attacks. Worse still, Threat recognition does not happen. There is no threat response from some of these attacks. They are so soft and so slow that your mind does not perceive this as a threat. So when it reacts, it does not react in a threat response. It reacts in a relaxed response. Now the first time someone actually goes to hit you, by the time your brain recognises the threat response, you're going to be hit in the face. Or if you're lucky, you're going to be hit in the face. Worst case scenario is he could have been carrying a blade. He could have been carrying anything. They, they, they could have been carrying anything. A baseball bat. You don't know what it's going to be. 
but the ultimate thing here is that your threat response is diminished as a result of what you've been experiencing and what you've you've trained in. And I've mentioned this before, an old adage from my old karate instructor, the way you train is the way you react. So if you only react to one type of threat, you're only going to ever perceive one type of threat and that's how your techniques are going to come out. So don't be surprised and don't start whining and bitching when your Aikido doesn't work because you've not been training adequately. That, 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 that annoys me. You know, uh, I've trained hard over the years. Trust me, my body will tell you <laughs> I've trained hard over the years because it's wrecked. You know, there's parts of me just don't function anymore. But at the end of the day, you know, I've learned a lot of good experiences on the back of that. So uh, I'm not complaining about that. But we then get people who take it to the opposite extreme. And as they are training, the Atemi seems to take over from the Aikido. I remember one class I was at where we were doing from a uh, basic standing posture, uh, sorry, basic standing posture, Tachi Waza, uh, and it was from Hidari Gamai uh, Gyaku Hanmi. Uh, so basically left posture, reverse grip, and we were doing Ikyo. And they said, right, first thing first, as soon as they grab you, punch him in the face. Then flip the arm over and punch him in the face. Then as, he's, as you go to grab his arm, drop the elbow in the back of his shoulder blades and grab the arm, knee him in the ribs. And as you go to take him down, get him down in the ground, then punch him in the face again. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. What the fuck are you doing? You, the first thing happened was you punched him in the face. Do it properly, fight over. You don't need Aikido. Why aren't you doing karate? Why aren't you doing boxing? You know, and it was it, it was crazy. The technique of a temi, there must have been about nine atemi points. Hit the elbow, snap the arm, do this, grab the thumb, mm, bite his thumb off, you know, attack his eyes, you know, hit him, take out his spleen and smash him in the face with it. It was all bollocks. Ah, oh, it was rubbish. You know, the first punch would have laid him out cold. You know, because it was a right smack bang in the face. You know, and... The other thing about a temi is you have to be careful when you apply it. A temi must be applied at the correct point in the technique. A temi should be used to enhance your technique and to make it effective. It's not there to replace the technique. So if you were to do, for example, Ikkyo, the first immobilization, bring the arm over, start to control it, and they start to resist it, that's the point where you can easily slide your hand up and smack them in the face and then continue with your technique. More so when you're doing Tenkan. You can't afford to interfere with that movement. So your first Atemi is the most important one. That's the one that's going to take their attention away. And the Atemi should take your partner's attention away from the strike and the technique. It shouldn't be taking them into the strike and the technique. Because I've seen that as well. People who go to do, for example, Shionagi, and their first Atemi turns their partner's head in the direction that they're going to be taking the arm. Well, that's pointless. You know, your Atemi have to be effective. And, but that's a discussion for another point another time. So it's, yes, Aikido has a Temi. Yes, I think we should all have it in there. And yes, I think we should be practicing it, but we should be practicing it as effectively as possible. And that's why, for me, Aikido's best as a secondary martial art. When you come to it after you have learned a bit of life lesson and a bit of training and a bit of technique lessons from other martial arts. And I'll continue to say that, simply because you'll have gained the experience in how to defend against an aggressive attacker. And that becomes vital because then you can carry that into your Aikido training. And it works vice versa. If you're training in a primary martial art, you can use Aikido to help enhance your body movement, your throws, your technique, your awareness, your turning, your capability to work from attacks to the back, grabs from the rear, all this kind of thing. It's a massive complementary martial art. you know. So how you want to use it comes right down to you. But when it comes to a temi, despite what the books say, despite what everyone else says, for me anyway, and I'd like to open this up to discussion, for me, a temi is a fundamental aspect of Aikido. If you're not practicing proper attack, and if you don't know when to attack and how to apply it, then all you're doing is throwing your arms out. You're possibly getting in the way of your own techniques. And worse still, you're leaving yourself open to counterattack. And then at the very extreme of that, if you're not practicing any effective attacks, if you're not applying threat... Now, I know we've discussed Uki. Uki's job is to receive the technique. But Uki's job is also to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? U Uki's job is also to initiate the attack and to put pressure on Nagi so that they have something to work with. So that they get the power they need to start doing the techniques properly. If you're not applying that pressure at that point, then when it comes to any form of pressure testing, 
your Aikido is going to fall flat in its arse. And that's where the biggest problem in modern Aikido lies today, as far as I'm concerned. Is that there's, it's not necessarily a need for pressure testing, it's pressure training. The pressure testing can come on the back of that. But to just suddenly throw your students in to pressure testing, it's not going to work. You as an instructor, and we as instructors, have a responsibility to teach them how to react appropriately first. That's it. That's my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, you know, keep, please keep them positive. I don't want to hear about anybody dissing the martial art itself. Just keep it positive on the subject matter, please. I would appreciate that. And other than that, stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers, guys.